Okay, it is May the 7th. I am way overdue for an update. So I thought I'd go ahead and update y'all now. Right here is my salad tent, which I made out of pillowcases. And if you look inside, you can see that I have lots of little lettuces. Let me get on this side, it's probably bigger. You can see a whole row of little lettuce seeds. I know it's really late in the year to be growing lettuce, but I said they do just fine if you uh, tent them and shade them out from the sun's heat and keep them moist. So that's what I've been doing. Um, over here is still my greenhouse, which has now just been reduced to pretty much just a holder for plants. Um, I have some new seedlings here that have still been growing pretty strong. Um, these are the heirloom brandy wines that I got. The uh, large red cherry and the uh, sweet 100s. My mom gave me some marigolds and they died, so I'm just waiting for them to dry up so that I can collect the seeds and spread them around. As you can see, this one's already growing new one. I've got a uh, spaghetti squash here, my winter squash. It's already coming out. I've got sage. Those are all my other herbs. They didn't come out very well. Uh, this is just mulch that I've been putting on everything to keep everybody moist. These are my loofah sponge. And I went to the farmer's market this weekend and got two celery. And one of my friends told me that if it still has roots, to just cut the bottoms off and plant it. So I stuck them in here because it's the only place I got for room for them right now and see if it sprouts up a few if not oh well they were a dollar each so I'm very happy with my purchase so these are the loofah gourd sponges and then these are the butternut squash so everybody's doing quite well I'm over here in my swimming pool right now it's almost lunchtime so during the heat of the day squash tends to wilt down I guess to shade itself in a sense. I've put in a bunch of uh, pinto beans all inside here with them, so that way they uh, they don't they don't feel so left out. I guess they've been all doing pretty well. And you can see you can probably see there are a few yellow squashes already in there. Yeah, so. Those are, that's a green zucchini one, and this big one's also a zucchini, and over there, and the rest over here are yellow. I know there's a chance of cross-pollination, but I've actually been able to avoid it by hand-pollinating myself early in the morning when the flowers are open. I come out here around 7, 8 in the morning with a paintbrush, and if I see any females, I pollinate them with the males, and right away they'll close up. So, that helps. Um, here are my green beans. As you can see, they're, they are starting to get a little bit taller. And they're starting to flower. On the other side of the trellis, they've uh, made green beans already. Uh, over here are my strawberry plants. They've been dying left and right. I've been keeping them moist and I've been keeping them covered. And these are the only ones that have survived, these last four. I'm going to see if I can try to obtain some more next week. And my aloe veras, which I don't know if they're going to survive. I've been trying not to water them. My new thyme that I got. My gardenia that my husband got me. Hasn't flowered again yet. Um, stevia, rosemary, spearmint, and my cosmos are finally starting to bloom. You can see there's some buds that are going to be coming and opening up soon. And here's my other green beans, like I said. They've been growing. If you look really carefully, you can see little green beans starting to develop. So I'm really excited about that. Tomorrow's watering day, so everybody's going to really enjoy the idea of having fresh water. <clears throat> And, yeah, those are my lanterns that I've used to decorate with. 
Uh, these are my bell peppers again. You can see in there is a bell pepper. Let's see, uh, I'll have to go around. But there's a uh, purple, deep purple bell peppers over here. No, it's really hard to see them. <laughs> Alright, I tried. And here's my tomato. I've got this flimsy cage on. It's actually just helping pretty good to hold it up. My oregano, sporadically out there. My basil, my parsley. And my tomatoes. Got a zigzag spider right there. And they're slowly starting to develop tomatoes. I've actually been picking dozens and dozens of tomatoes off of these already. But sadly, they are from blossom and rot. So, it's kind of... Makes me feel a little sad, but I'm, I'm patient. I just put the mulch in a couple days ago, and maybe it'll even out the watering. And I read that if the mulch helps with that, you... Uh, it evens out moisture levels so it's not constantly wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry, just gradual. And it's supposed to fix up the uh, chemical imbalance of the calcium. And that way it'll stop the blossom end rots. It apparently, I, I saw it on the Texas, Central Texas Gardener video where the calcium gets kind of jostled up from the wet dry wet dry syndrome and it causes the uh, tomatoes to accidentally put the calcium into growing more leaves which they have been doing that and less on the actual growing of the fruit so it causes blossom end rot so it's not just that they need calcium or that they need magnesium or anything like that it's really just they need mulch. <laughs> so I'm going to see how that goes. Some more of my bell pepper plants. This is what's left of my onions. You remember that whole top row up there was onions. And now it's salad. So I'm just waiting for these to finish up. I'm taking my sweet old time about it. I don't... I'm, every so often one will fall down and I'll pick it and dry it. These big green ones here, these are not weeds. These are... Um, type of marigolds. So by the end of this month they'll blossom. They usually grow about three feet tall. And these are the other pinto beans and I put some garlic in there. And it helps deter the ants. The ants don't seem to like the garlic too much so they've stopped eating that poor little plant there. But other than that, that's the rest of my garden. And that's the update. Um, a couple weeks ago, I, I can tell you a really scary story. In my, well, I think it's scary. I saw my uh, first tomato hornworm around over here. You can see the branches completely severed. Yeah, the tomato hornworm came up around here and took a big old chunk. And it was funny. I was all leaning in and, you know, checking for blossom and rot like I always do. And all of a sudden I see something off the corner of my eye and I see this huge monstrosity of a caterpillar. I've never seen one of those in my life. And so that was very traumatic for me. And here you can see right here, this one's got a blossom and rot. So it's been going on for about two weeks now. This is probably the third week. And it usually takes about a couple, a couple months for it to clear up. So I've been trying to keep them watered on a schedule. Like I said, tomorrow's watering day. I water about every three days. And some of them complain more than others. But uh, I'll probably be going around and picking out any blossom end rots. But there's been quite a successful rate of some that are not end rotting yet like this big one here that's the size of my thumb so we are getting some good results coming through from this mulch and that's the update i guess thank you for watching bye